why is it important for us to like reintegrate with our, our inner child when we're now adults? <laughs> So in shamanism, they look at this as like fragmentation of the soul. So when we go through traumatic experiences, like pieces, parts of our soul literally fragment from our awareness because we don't want to feel that stuff. So it's like this numbness that gets put there, but there's all these parts of ourselves that are waiting to be reintegrated. So let's say a trauma happened at four years old, another one at five, another at seven, another at 10. It's like, there's all these little versions of ourself that are stuck somewhere in our awareness waiting to be reintegrated with us. And you can even see this sometimes when you're becoming really aware of yourself. Wow. That is like my 12 year old kicking in right now. Look at that. Or like, wow, that's the four year old in me. I can't even create a sentence right now, you know, these, you'll notice these patterns. And so when you can start to identify where this is coming from, you can start to reconnect with those parts of yourself. And so it's like welcoming this part of you back. And the very first thing is to notice, to listen, you know, to, to have, and it, it sounds really corny, but to have like this meditative experience where you're, you're in a safe place and you're alone and you don't have to feel like you have to edit yourself. You don't have to feel like anyone's going to judge you for being crazy if you're talking out loud to yourself. But imagine, let's say the four-year-old or the seven-year-old sitting in front of you and, and, and you're, you're just present with what they're feeling, with what they're doing, with what they're saying, with whatever shows up in the moment because something is going to show up. And when you can acknowledge that and feel that, that's the first step of like this enormous release, this enormous liberation of that part of yourself that was dying for someone to listen, for someone to recognize that they're sad or they feel really lonely. And then you can recognize like, wow, like this four-year-old part of me feels so alone in the world. What does he or she need right now? A hug. And so you can literally imagine bringing this little child into yourself and hugging this little part of yourself. And it could be a very cathartic experience where you burst into tears because it's just so powerful and you recognize how much that part of you needed to be integrated. And you're going to see that like that part of you stops throwing all those emotional temper tantrums, you know, it stops sabotaging you in the way that normally it would sabotage you because it was just trying to get you to listen, to acknowledge the feeling there. So this kind of work, um, I highly recommend that people do this exploration with their inner child. Now, in certain cases, I want to make a disclaimer. Some people might find that they have a lot of dissociation. And if there was really severe trauma and abuse and the person is just starting this journey, they really need to do this process with a professional there in front of them because they can go into some really dark places and not know how to get out. So if, if somebody's listening to this and they recognize that they dissociate, which means like you check out sometimes and if you lose time, you don't remember what happened or you get yourself into a severe PTSD crash and you don't have the tools yet internally to rescue yourself from that, which you will develop over time. Initially, it really is best to do that work with a professional right there in front of you so they can guide you through that experience. And so you're not alone. And you know that, that loneliness can be and often is the core wound of those of us who have the codependency patterns. It, we feel alone in the world, like utterly alone in the world. Not like I'm a little lonely right now because no one's here, but it's like there could be people around you and you just feel like you're going to fall into the abyss of the earth because you feel so lonely. That's the kind of loneliness I'm talking about. And that can be really devastating. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. That's really important. And everyone, yes, if you're, if that is you, we obviously recommend you get, um, get someone to help you with that, that you can walk through those processes together. Um, I'd love to ask you, I remember when we last talked, we talked a little bit about personal responsibility and how important that is. Um, Can you touch on that as it relates to breaking free from our codependent tendencies? Why is that important? It is so important for everything in life, but especially this issue when we're dealing with codependency, we have to be able to look within because the tendency in the victim stage, anybody who feels like a victim, and I'm not saying they're not a victim, they are a victim. They went through an experience in which they were a victim. In order to get out of that stage and get into the survivor stage, we have to turn our focus inward. 
So when we're in the victim stage, everything is outside. The abuser, the alcoholic, the addict, the person with the problem, the thing that happened to you. And so as we continually focus outside, what does that mean? It means we're not taking personal responsibility. Now that's a process and it's part of the process. So there's no blame there. There's nothing to be ashamed about. We all went through that phase where we didn't even know how to take care of ourselves. We didn't know really that was an option. We were just so used to living in that victimhood. And so when we turn that focus inward, that's self-responsibility and that's the leap from stage one, from the victim stage into the survivor stage. Because when we take responsibility for ourselves, we become empowered because we realize, yeah, all this horrible stuff happened and all of that was very real. It doesn't mean that it wasn't. It doesn't mean that that person wasn't abusive or that person didn't have an alcohol or addict problem. That was real and we can do something about it now. That's the amazing thing about taking responsibility for ourselves is that we realize the power that we have over our lives. We grab the reins of our destiny in our hands again, instead of just allowing life to kind of throw us around and guide us around and we keep repeating those same experiences. Everything changes when we take responsibility for ourselves. And I think never has there been a more important time in history for us to do that than right now. Mm, amen to that. Interesting times that we live in right now. Absolutely. Thank you. I so appreciate that. That's just, that's so near and dear to my heart and so important. And I know it can be hard for people, um, myself included to get to that point, but that is, that's the freedom. That's, that's where all the gold is in my experience is taking that responsibility. Any last insights? Do you have anything else you want to talk about before we hop off? I do want to mention one thing that I forgot to mention about the personal responsibility. So when you're in the victim stage and what one of the traits of codependency is looking for a rescuer, looking for a savior, looking for someone to save us from our life and the experiences. And that's really dangerous. Why? Because we tend then to meet people who act like a savior or rescuer. What do they do? They offer you some kind of humanitarian help. It always looks really great at the beginning, but then that person often switches immediately and now they're the abuser. Now they're taking way more from you than they ever gave to you. That was just a trick to hook you in there because they noticed the vulnerability. They noticed that you were looking outside yourself for someone to save you. So that's why the personal responsibility is so important because when we rescue ourselves, we're not looking for a rescuer outside. 